Welcome to Winners, Wallets, and Worldviews, the only show that's going to teach you how to be somebody. Where in your life did you learn that you're not good at Take what you're most passionate about and what you're most fearful of. And what is the plan to overcome that fear? And what is the plan to enact that passion? Here we are. I have a local coffee buffet. My name's AJ Armstrong, and here is my co-host, Dan Spambauer, but we have a special guest on today, Alex Belleville with Mirrorless Productions. How are you doing, brother? I am good. I am still waking up, but I got my local coffee from New Moon, so an Americano with two shots will change that. <laughs> two shots, man. That's, <laughs> That's cool. what I love. A little double shot. A little double shot Americano. I always get a, a was it is a New Moon? It's New Moon right here downtown across the street, I always get a confused with blue moon so i'm always i'm telling people yeah, yeah, i'm gonna yeah. grab a blue moon right now and they're like it's like nine in the morning dude like a, like, a, be- a beer or the ice cream <laughs> yeah that's what they're always like they're like it's like some kind of beer they're like what, what's wrong with you you know i'm like well gotta support local oh sorry new moon new moon, yes, but, new moon. hey it's a pleasure to have you on the show today this is the local coffee buffet we uh we try to get different guests on we always try to find local guests and it's almost impossible to talk about local entrepreneurship story without talking about you, man. You know, which you're all over the place. You're a well-known videographer in the area and video filmmaker. Um, tell me how you kind of got into some of this stuff, man. Wow. Well, uh, my answer, don't be afraid to cut me off because I am a talker. So my answer could get a little long. Let me stop you there. No, I'm kidding. That makes our job easy, Alex. Keep talking. Perfect. Hey, do you mind turning up the volume a little bit on your end at all? Just to make sure we can hear you quick. Yeah. Uh, does that help? Coming a little faint. A little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. I have the internal mic on my iMac, so maybe I'll just sit a little bit closer. <laughs> so I am 31, and I never started chasing my dreams um, until I was 22, and I changed my life around. Uh, I always love uh, filmmaking and movies since I was a young kid. Um, but I never really picked up the camera um, until I was 22. I wasn't one of those kids. You know, there's a lot of film students and uh, really talented filmmakers and videographers out there who maybe had that camera in their hands at a young age. And growing up, for me, it was really I just loved movies and I wanted to get into filmmaking. But I didn't do that until I changed uh, my life around. And I started telling my story, um, just literally putting the camera on me, talking about getting clean and sober and changing my life around. And so yep. it started with me promoting myself. Then it started me, I was started making music and doing spoken word poetry and hip hop music. I yeah. started filming my own music videos. I'd be cruising down Main Street, like making a video myself. And people would be like, how did you do that? My early videos sucked. Um, <laughs> really bad. It went from there to me, you know, going back to school at UW Oshkosh for radio, TV and film. And that was uh, 2012, 2013, where things really started to change as I met other people in the community, other people my age who were also making videos and making music. So I started to get involved with other people. And next thing I know, I'm shooting videos for kids at school. Um, I started to get involved in like the local music scene. Believe it or not, back in uh, 2013 to 2015, there was an actual hip hop scene uh, here in Oshkosh. <laughs> And I must have made a music video for every hip hop artist in the Fox Valley. (laughs) (laughs) And that's really how I started to dive into my craft was working on music videos um, back then. And then I started doing wedding videos. What turned into me making a wedding video for my brother turned into me doing it from someone from high school. Next thing I know, and fast forward two years, I made a music video for like every <laughs> every group set of this one group of girls. Um, and it really was that early work that I did in music videos and wedding videos that helped me work on my craft and, and kind of tell myself, you know what, I love this. I want to make a career out of it. And I think I want to start my own business. Um, what's, what's like your favorite your favorite to make now? You know, like if you, if you had the option to just kind of someone's like, hey, this is the project I'm working on, what would that be? It's really hard because now we make such a diverse set of videos. Like I still make music videos and wedding videos, but what we make more now than anything is like kind of these commercial brand promo videos for businesses and brands. Yeah. Um, I really like the fast paced stuff. So some of the stuff that we've done with like uh, Vayner Sports and the athletes, I love to edit really fast. So if you have an athlete who's like working out and lifting weights and just doing a ton of fast paced stuff, like the way I can go about piecing that together is so much fun. But I think at the end of the day, I just love telling stories. So when we get a new client who has this awesome story or we haven't worked with them before, 
that's like day one for me. It's like starting all over. It's like, boom, I don't know them. I haven't told, told their story yet. So I love that. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. I think there's something to uh, storytelling, right? It's just like when you can find, everybody's got a weird story, you know what I mean? And it doesn't need to be, I don't mean weird, but it's always interesting where people come from and the, the struggles that individuals go through and the conflicts that they have to overcome. And it's just like, life is a struggle, but it's interesting to see that most people come out of it, you know? And it's, I just heard this on a guy on the podcast I had a couple of days ago said, you know, you're either leaving a storm, heading into a storm, or you're in a storm. And it's just like, that is what really the art, the story arc is, right? It's just the conflict, the drama, the things and everyone goes through that. So it's like being a part of that journey is really cool that you're able to like be there with them and, and tell that through a visual lens. And I, I love what you said there. I mean, that's just so true. And it's, yeah, I think the, uh, you know, the thing that it's easy to forget sometimes too, is that like from a business standpoint, businesses are run and filled with people, right? Like all those guys have, you know, their story that makes up that business story. And so much work goes in behind the scenes, especially in a small business that I love being able to showcase that in some small way. Cause a lot of the people we work with, they've never told their story through video before. So that, that brings me excitement. <laughs> What's like a, your most proud project you've done? Oh, might be a hard question for you. What, what, what's is, like your favorite? You're, you like, this is the showcase piece I give people. Uh, I, I think one of the Geronimo Allison, like the first Geronimo video that we made, that's just, I mean, there's literally on my wall, you can't see it. I wish I could turn my computer, but it's me directing Geronimo in Lambo with no one in there. And that was like, uh, I don't believe like in these, like, you know, I made it moments, but if there was ever one that was like a, I made it moment or like, it, <laughs> it just felt like my dreams were happening. And to be able to direct, you know, an NFL player and make this creative like mattress commercial and have all the creative freedom to it, that was like a dream come true. That was like, that's what I should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome, man. That's one that I still show people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing Aaron doesn't really get, uh, like you said, Alex, about the hip hop scene um, <laughs> during those years. Uh, I'm a good friend with Mario Johnson, too. Uh, when I was working at the t-shirt shop, he'd come in and he'd order all this merchandise and he was always saying, yeah, I'm working with Belleville, I'm working with Alex. He's doing a great job. So we got to pose, yeah, or Aaron, you got to see some of those videos. They're pretty good. And, and Mario's yeah. like a very, very talented artist. And, I didn't uh, know Oshkosh was known for hip hop. It, it, Alex is right. It got like crazy there for like two years. Like the university was like pumping out like there was really? people. And then, <laughs> and I remember every Alex's name was on all those videos all the time that were pumping out. <laughs> he was just like the, he was like the king of, of, of the, a Fox Valley hip hop. I love it. And I love that you brought that up because it was a really cool point. Like you mentioned Mario, like at one point UW Oshkosh uh, hired me and Mario to make like a school yeah. <laughs> song. And for like two, three years, they played it at the intro of every football game. I remember <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Cause I remember you get, yeah, it was just, it was crazy for like two years straight. And it, you know, it seems like it wasn't that long ago. I even you know it was like you said, like seven years ago, but I remember being there. I remember Mario was like coming in and, and then merchandise was pumping on. I'm like, Holy cow, you guys got something here. You got something's rolling here. And, uh, this just funny. Great guy, Mario. Awesome guy. I still try to keep in touch with him. Me too. And and he really did a great job at building just a movement here. I know he I did. In, in Oshkosh. Uh, it was called Full Effect, but it was mm -hmm. really fun to be a part of that. And I give Mario so much credit to where I'm at today because it was like, it was truly, it was working with other people when I was starting out. You know, I think when you're an artist and a creative and you start out, you're just filled with so much, you know, uh, you know, you're insecure, there's fear of, can I make it doing this? And to have people like Mario and good friends along your side pushing you like, no, we can do this, we can make it, we can do some awesome stuff right here in Oshkosh. That's like, that's what I needed was people like that. Yeah, it was, it was just cool to see like, you know, you're so talented at seeing like the downtown Oshkosh area, then, you know, included a good like, it wasn't like full hardcore rap, but it was like a hip, you know, a good hip hop beat, a good music, you know, good thing you can pl you play in your car, but then you see the the video and it's like, oh, there's, that's downtown Oshkosh and then just keeping it local. I think that was just awesome. I'll just, I'll just send some of those to Aaron. Were these like PG videos or were they like legit? Yeah, yeah they were, kidding. right? No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> like some 50 cent, you know, just like rolling the dollar bill. No, we weren't <laughs> throwing cash around. You go to the bank and get a couple like million dollars of fake cash and just like throw it around. <laughs> What's your bank in the video? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, good, man. Well, yeah, dude, you're, you're clearly one of the, one of the leaders in the film, um, 
I'd say business where you, you were best to win a bag or you got a whole bunch of awards. You've gotten awards in the past, right? What are, what are some of those awards you guys have gotten? Last yeah. Year? Um, we won best of the Winnebago, um, I think two years in a row, but, uh, back when they had video in it. So sadly now they don't have a uh, video in there. Like, uh, they took it out. Yeah. I was a little bummed about that. I think it just kind of got factored into photography. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, I was happy to really happy to win those. Um, and then we've also had like some of my, even my earlier music video work, won a few um, awards, like uh, we were in a film convert competition, we placed second in that, this worldwide film competition, and then um, have had a few awards with uh, online film festivals out in LA. What is your, I guess, trick, if you will, like what's, what's your craft? What makes you different? Um, how do you get a little bit of a leading edge on your art? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And honestly, I think uh, the response that I'm going to give you is pulled back from some of the stuff that clients have said to me. Um, I joke sometimes that I'm so wrapped up in my videos, you know, that um, I love what I do and I'm so passionate about it. So to hear from other clients uh, at times after we make a video and, you know, hopefully do a really good job on that production and the client is happy, you know, we have these success stories of our clients will tell us like, this is what makes you guys different. And when it comes to making, again, the biggest thing we do these days is create, uh, I like to call them mini movies for businesses and brands. So these really fast paced videos, like 60 second videos. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I do best is like, I can't sit here and say that I am the best shooter, you know, like I'm not the best cinematographer. I am not the best editor, but what I'm really good at is piecing the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. thinking about that from start to finish. The, the work that we put into plan a video, when we shoot it, the energy that we bring on set, that is something that I know that maybe someone else can't match. That what we bring, you know, as a whole to the table uh, it's really fun and we plan it all out. Like we don't just come in and make decisions on the spot. We really put in a lot of work to pre-plan that video, to shoot it, make sure the client is happy. And then I'd say the other big thing is how we edit it with the music. That is a really big thing that I think is unique to me. And this kind of brings it full circle. My uh, past with, you know, music and, and making music and being a part of hip hop is that I love music so much that when I write a script, this could be like a nonprofit for, you know, whatever business or, where I take their message and I write that out to the music, almost like an artist writes mm. lyrics to the beat. I can resonate with that. And, and I think that's really unique to us. So the whole music, you're on this like journey through the music, through the footage. And that's something that it's, it's almost hard for me to exp explain. So I hope people can kind of understand that. No, I get it. I, I get it. It's, it's where you take there. I don't know if that happens to you at all, but you know, I get creative sometimes where like you're on a, a long car ride or you're traveling or something and you're listening to some music, you just got, you know, your headphones in or whatever, but then you start putting a story together to fit the music. And it's almost like th the music inspired this like epic idea. Like this, this is when this happens and this, and now it starts to pick up the pace. And then this is where this happens. And it's almost like the opposite of what you would think. Most, most videographers or, or cinematographers, when you talk to them, they, they say they story first, right? Everything's story first. And but you're conforming the story to the music where it's almost this rhythm. And Scorsese does that a lot too, you see. And, and that right there, you hit the nail on the head. That was like, honestly, really cool and heartwarming to hear because that is exactly how it goes for me. And, and I don't know if it's like that for every other videographer or filmmaker, but there's days where I can come into the studio here in my Americano, I come in tired, right? And I have this video to plan out. And I go to my computer over here and I find music for that production. Next thing I know, I'm blasting music in here. It's 9 a.m. I'm like maestro to the music. I'm writing out ideas. And boom, there's the video. Like, I didn't feel that 30 minutes prior, but the music did that. Right. And that, that's really cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but I, I know that Scorsese does that a lot, too, where he's like super musical, where it's almost a, a rhythm. And that's how he'll he'll cut up his film to match the music. And there's a lot of artists I know that are like that. A lot of actors too that are, are the same way. And I think that there's a, there's something in that, you know, there's like a, there's a trick to that. And I think that's cool. And you see that a lot in, in your film work too. Question for you. Yes. What is your favorite genre to just watch for like movies or shows? That's easy. Well, it's really funny that you brought up Scorsese because he is my number one favorite film director. No kidding. I absolutely love crime drama films. <laughs> It's just like those old Scorsese films, like Goodfellas, Casino, yep. uh, New Age Crime Dramas, uh, loves, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, I don't know why. I just love like crime dramas and bank robbery films. And that stuff is my thing. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I got a, I got a great, great crime drama film idea. I got to tell you guys sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. 
Yeah, it could take us a while. T- it takes place in modern day Las Vegas. No, I, I'll, I'll get there. We, we won't waste everybody else on here talking about my movie ideas, but we'll have to talk sometime. Completely. I mean, the, and that is one of my biggest goals is to truly make a film, to make an independent crime drama film one day. Yeah. I mean, how far off do you think that goal could be? I don't know. A uh, couple of years, I've already started working on, you know, a script and some of that early stuff. I like to think a lot of the work that I'm putting in now, even in like our, you know, business productions, like all the work that I do now, video wise, lends to where I'm going to be at when I choose to create that film. Right. Yeah. But I do want to make sure that I am taking time, you know, it's just good for me creatively too to like write and, and take, you know, some time and energy and put it into a passion project is I've noticed very healthy for me. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but it's almost unhealthy the amount of creativity I've had during this quarantine. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's two in the morning. I'm sitting there texting Dan these ideas. And then Just Dan's, like, Dan's like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a really big itch. Like I've been seeing all, all of these like creative, like desolate videos. Like I saw one of like Las Vegas. And I'm just like, I want to travel and film this of this city with no one there. It's like, well, you can't do that, but that would be really cool. <laughs> the Vegas, the Vegas, like quiet strip videos have been so like I've been watching those all the time too. It's just like because we, you know, I used to go out there every year, and then to see that how empty it is and crazy, it's just like it's so surreal. It just really is like, and then there's no traffic, and I'm like, and uh, yeah, it's crazy. The, the Las Vegas one was the one that hit me like more than any. Like I've seen like. Milwaukee one, a few others, the Las Vegas one, just to see like no one there was just like. Well, I thought Times Square where it was just like, I am legend. If nobody was there. I would love Times Square if it looked like that. I yeah, mean, when we went out there, Dan was stressed <laughs> out with the people. He was sitting there like. <laughs> that was I'm the like, best. That was a great, well, someday we'll have to dissect that entire New York trip with uh, the, the, with the wife and girlfriend. That was, that was something. That's awesome. That you guys <laughs> Yeah, it is weird, though. I mean, just the amount of just ghost eeriness, right? It's almost like a haunting feeling sometimes you go out a little bit. Completely. So, I, Alex, I had a question for you. So with your business, do you do you have some, like, fr- freelancers that you work with, the contractors, or do you have employees, or how do you, uh, how are you a single man show? I know I sometimes see on the community with the uh, assistant that sometimes filming some stuff, so I was always curious how that worked. Yeah. Um, for the for the most part, we have yeah a list of independent contractors that we work with. Cool. So yeah. A lot of them have other part time gigs, or you know we've had intern interns from UW Oshkosh, um, and that system has worked out pretty good for us. Uh, for me, uh, you know I, I can will definitely say that in filmmaking and making a video, you know that video has such a better chance at success when you are working with others and involving others. Like, I kind of joke about it like this too. Like, yes, you can be a one man band. But at the same time, like filmmaking involves like even 10, 12 jobs when you're on set. And there's a oh, yeah. lot of things where as, you know, a smaller team, we're handling so many jobs. Like there's the shooter, there's the director, there's the producer, there's a guy who lights it up, there's audio. And there's so much we could easily have five of us there and that would be OK. But we also don't, you know, really the budget doesn't fit that. Right. But we do have to kind of bring it back down <laughs> to earth and, and have really uh, two to three people is what we usually have. What's the hardest part about putting together a film? Ooh, I would say I kind of joke like this. I'm a people person. So I love getting out there and filming the video with the client, right? Like that's the funnest part, even though my shirt says filming ain't easy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I love it. There is just a fat smile on my face all day long when I'm filming and working with clients. But the truth is, is that 20% at most of my time is spent out there in the field shooting with the client. And the other 20% is planning videos and, you know, working on the business. And then really 60, 50% of my time is editing the video. So I like editing, but I say that that is the biggest challenge because you have so much footage, so much more time gets spent actually piecing it together than you filming it. That that's kind of like the challenging part of like, okay, bringing this all together, making sure the client loves it. And then, you know, meeting that deadline or that turnaround time. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen any like, um, I don't know. Is there any like process you can do to optimize editing or anything like that? I mean, like I know some people like farm it out to VAs internationally and stuff like that, but you know, I don't know if you found anything that seems to be an efficient process. No, that that's a great question. And that's something I kind of joke about too, is because, you know, we live, uh, I think in this awesome culture now of, you know, there's so much like inspirational stuff out there about how to like cut down your time and this and that. Right. And I joke like with editing, like, 
you know, once you get to that point where you're like a really good editor, like there's no really way to fast track that. Yeah, like, you don't want to give that to anybody. I'm still spending 20 hours editing a 60 second video, you know, over the course of a couple of days. Like there's no way for me to change that. Um, and then the hard part is, is like we shoot in such a high format that our file sizes are so big. It's like half a terabyte for like a 60 second video. So to upload that online and to send that to someone, that would just be tricky in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, I never even thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those are huge files. Yeah. That's well, yeah, crazy. you're shooting in 4K. I mean, yep, yeah. you're, shooting, you're shooting 4K HDR raw. So it's wow. very close to what like an independent film is shot in. And then we, so we can go back and color it and really manipulate it in the same way that films are. So we can give it that stylized look. What do you need to shoot like a film for Netflix or Amazon Prime or something like that? Just one tiny camera up from the camera that I have. Wow. Okay. There is yeah. uh, what was really cool was the end of last year. So um, our company, Mirrorless Productions, was actually half named after the kind of cameras that we use, mirrorless cameras. Now, towards the end, or it was the middle or end of last year, Panasonic, and we use Panasonic cameras, uh, GH5S specifically, but they released a camera, a $4,000 handheld camera that got approved instantly by Netflix. It is the first mirrorless under $5,000 camera that is approved by Netflix. Wow. Look at that. That will be my next. <laughs> <laughs> Making some Netflix films. When, when's that going to make the list, man? Well, and the funny thing is, it's like, do I really need that? And do I need that right now? No. Does the gearhead and tech guy in me want that and drool over it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but it's a little bit of a selling point, too. I mean, you, you're able to, if you're working with customers, you can be like, look, we're, we're shooting the highest quality you can shoot. Even though you compress it down to something that they're not going to be able to tell the difference anyway, it's still like at least a good story to tell, right? No, and, and there are, and you're right about that because there are some people that like that like that, and there are times where I say, you know, we shoot in close to Netflix quality. So yeah, that's cool though, man. It is cool. Well, so what's your favorite? What we were having a debate the other day, Dan and I. Actually, Dan and I didn't have the debate; we both agreed. But other people have been arguing about the best burger in Oshkosh, and we want to hear your undivided opinion oh best burger that's hard there's so many places that i love that's hard oh that's that's putting me on the spot uh, i love i love i love beckett's burger Ooh, beckett's making the top huh i like it yeah beckett's does make a great burger yeah but we so i still think ruby owl's the top and Dan, what's your thoughts? Did you ever, you never claimed that? I haven't had, you know what? I haven't had a Ruby Owl burger. I think every time I've had there, I think the last time we had there was that, uh, what was that like uh, week thing where you went each week, you went to somewhere else. Remember, I think that was the last time I've been to Ruby Owl, like the weekly lunch special. Remember did we this. did that? I did I this. Know. Yeah, me and you went for lunch. Remember, it was like the, it was like restaurant week and you went and there was, there was like, oh, a yeah, yeah. We, menu. we, we tried yeah. to do the rest, hashtag restaurant <laughs> week challenge. Yeah, so I don't think I had a burger there. I don't know what my favorite burger is. I don't Look, know. Alex, here, here's the thing, man. This year, you and me, we're going to do restaurant week challenge. Every meal is going to be eaten at every different restaurant in Oshkosh. There's about 27 different hot restaurants that participated last year. Hey, Alex, he's been what? dreaming about this for a long time. I couldn't time. make it because we had to travel, <laughs> and then I broke, and I was just going all over social media, like, restaurant week challenge, baby, and then I just never even finished it. <laughs> just loves it. I made it to a few this past year. I think it's really cool that they do that, but that would be hard to go to every one of those. Oh, that's why it's a challenge. <laughs> Sometimes you got, I think I did the math. You got to do maybe four or five meals a day a couple of times. Oh my God. You just got to exercise more. I think that's the trick, but we're, we're doing it. We're going to do it this year. We're going to freaking. All right. Dan every, and Matt are in. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> yeah, you guys can in. at least watch me try to just freaking gorge myself. And <laughs> Well, by the way, yeah, we did order what, $85 worth of Zeroni's at the Friday night, which was, that was not good. <laughs> well, think For about three Mr. people, four people. Well, he got the what'd you get the extra large meat lovers monster pizza or something? You got that was 30. The meat, I something. got the Metasaurus Rex. <laughs> yeah, I gotta give back local though, right? Well, Marissa was just so pissed because, like, you know, we talk about health and fitness and diet on this <laughs> show, and here I am just eating Metasaurus Rex at Zeroni's, just pounded it with a with a what did we get for a side? Just the full grease uh, cheese curd platter or something with it that we did. I mean, we we picked up the box, dude, and the bottom almost <laughs> fell out from underneath it. There was so much grease in there. We were six feet apart, though. Remember that? Yeah, we were all six feet apart. We don't hang out together unless we're six feet apart. 
<laughs> we don't break rules. We don't break <laughs> rules. There's no how how's your how has your business been adapting with all this uh, shutdown stuff? I know a big part of your business is events and weddings and things. I imagine that slowed down a little bit, but what's your thoughts? Yeah, it has been very interesting. Um, I've but I've loved. I really appreciate you asking that because I think it's been really fun for us and just me to even sit here and look at how we've adapted. Where you know that first week when COVID hit, it was like all of a sudden I think you know everyone across the world was kind of freaking out. And you know me from a small business owner standpoint, I had all these shoots planned. And actually, I, I was about one week from going to Washington D.C. for a really special shoot, and I was really excited for that. And like that got put on halt. Uh, so many of my shoots got put on halt. And I had that kind of freak out moment, like, oh, my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? Well, right. luckily, luckily, the way that we work, too, is we usually have about three, four productions, you know, we're sitting on about to edit, you know, three, four, we're about to shoot. So I had, you know, work videos to be done, you know, that I trimmed the turnaround times on. So those videos that I was sitting on, I was able to deliver to the clients faster. We had these shoots on hold, but I've actually been very fortunate because I've kind of picked up some covid related projects i've had <laughs> clients push me to work very creatively i mean um instead of hiring talent i was in a client video video for a ministry in oklahoma like i put myself in as the talent and <laughs> filmed the video i bought a gopro and we have been filming from the hood of my car i have purchased footage online to make client videos i've never done that um we've really gone out of the box to say hey how can we make you videos um, I shot a video this past weekend with my family uh, for a very special Mother's Day video. My whole family became the talent. My eight-year-old son did the voiceover. Uh, like the, <laughs> the list goes on of how we've been able to still create work. And I've just been very blessed to have clients that believe in me to be like, yeah, do that. Like I'm just throwing out these ideas like, yeah, we could do it this way or let's do this. And they're on board with it. And that's been really cool. Yeah. You're definitely uh, adapting creatively with, for sure. I mean, with, without being able to pull together a set or an event or all that stuff. Hey, I did want to mention something to you though. If you ever are in need of like a guy to do like a movie trailer voice, I'm your, I'm your man. Check this out, dude. You're, you guys ready for this? Just ready. Sorry. In a world, one man, one opportunity, one ultimate sacrifice starring Keanu Reeves, Dan Spanbauer and Alex Belleville. In this ride of the summer, see, I think I could totally you sound like thing. Triple H having a heart attack on that. that, was, that was <laughs> I got some Bane from Batman vibes too. <laughs> Loved it. How did Bane go? I, I think I could do a Bane. Um, like, or perhaps you're wondering why you'd shoot a man before I draw off a plane. <laughs> Maybe that's just what I wanted here. <laughs> Maybe this is my audition to be a voiceover guy, you know, like I could totally do some kind of. I could totally do a, a movie trailer. I think that guy that died or whatever. Who just... When I make a movie trailer for my crime drama, you're doing the voiceover. Yeah, there we go. I'll, I'll do it. Directed by Martin Scorsese, <laughs> starring Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio. I think I got this. That's you know. great. Yeah, Alex, I was going to tell you, um, with your last video, I think you put it out for, for your Oshkosh one, like Oshkosh coming together. I thought that was really cool with your son. And your son's been doing a lot of uh, video work for you now that he's been off of school too. So I thought that was really cool that you said, uh, talked about your family bringing in. It seems like he enjoys uh, holding the camera and, 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 and breeding him young, as we could say. So is he like really into movies or, or what, what exact, how, where is he at at eight years old? I guess he, I could say. Well, so I uh, uh, love that you brought that up. So that's kind of funny is like, so my eight year old, he's, you know, just super into sports and I brought him in here in the studio on Friday night to record this voiceover for the mother's day video. And he did such, you know, such a good job on it, but it's my 12 year old who 12 year old. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He's the one picking up the camera right now. And, and he's like into it, but like, you know, he loves so much stuff right now, right? Like all these kids love Fortnite and video mm -hmm. games and whatnot. But like, so I don't push him on like, you know, editing or doing stuff on the computer with video. But when I throw him the camera, he seems to be really into it. Like he shot behind the scenes on Saturday of me working with my younger son and daughter and my wife, Chelsea. And he shot behind the scenes of me making the video. And like he was shooting in manual. Like it's taken me like years to get good at shooting in manual. And he didn't want to shoot in automatic. So that was really cool. And he was like, oh, dad, I got this cool picture. Or he would be like, oh, you move too fast. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, you know, it'd be so good for you to just be thrown into it. And 
I mean, he did this for a couple of hours and it was, I looked at him like, do I got to pay you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that now do you, when you're working on a project, do you, um, is it hard? Do you not, uh, like, do you always edit in your studio or do you sometimes have to take it home? I'm always curious, like, how do you differentiate, you know, like work and, and, and family time? Cause sometimes I know like you're just such a goal getter that you want to keep going on that, <laughs> that video. Uh, do you tend to keep your work at your workplace or do you sometimes edit at home when you got some free time? Well, that's a great, great question. What's really been a change for me is this studio right here is like over the last year of finally having my own creative studio space where yeah. all my gear stays, all my computers stay. Um, I'm able to do, I think, a little bit better of a job at leaving it here. Um, I don't even have a computer at home. Nice. And that's been kind of nice. But I, I will say that one little challenge is, is that I spend so much time, uh, you know, editing and by myself behind a computer that he, here's, here's one of the jokes that when this quarantine all happened, there was all these pictures going around in the film community. And it was like a life of a video, a life of a video editor. And it was like him at his computer editing. And then it was like a life of a video editor in quarantine. And it was the same picture <laughs> <laughs> because we self isolate so much behind, you know, a computer making these videos. Um, one thing or what I'm kind of getting at is that I spent so much time here that I think creatively, sometimes it would be good for me to maybe edit outside of here. So I really want to get a MacBook later this year and maybe sometimes just, you know, spend an afternoon editing at home or editing on my porch just to kind of change it up. I think that could be good for me, but yeah. uh, I, I used to have a home office and all that good stuff. And, and it is a little bit harder to separate then you're like, Oh, I can do the laundry and work but then you're kind of distracted with some other stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I was always curious how, cause like, like I said, like once you're on a project that, that that's how I am too. It's just like, you just got to keep going and going and going on it. But it's like, all right, I gotta have, you know, your family time and, and, and take away that from the office, even though you're working on a real personal project for, you know, a client or, you know, or, or some fun, like you, like you said, with the uh, Oshkosh video, I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I, I just never separate anything. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I'm like freaking Trump tweeting at three in the morning or something, you know, just like, I'm like sending Dan like, Hey dude, what about this? What about this idea? I, I think I did that a couple of days ago. I might've done it yesterday. I don't know. Yeah. They, all the days roll together. Now that's the problem. If it's a I, bad idea. It's usually, I don't get a text for a couple hours. That's how I know. It's like, okay, that one, that one didn't land. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, to pull out a positive of this situation, one of the best things for me has like this whole situation um, because I really give a lot of, a lot of credit to my wife right now because she was a full-time hairstylist and I'm, I'm sure, you know, Dan, like, yeah. um, you know, with your girlfriend is that, you know, now they're not able to work. And so she has done so much to help take care of the kids and do so much at home. And so it's kind of pushed me to make sure that I'm leaving like the studio at a certain time to get home, to go on a few more walks with the kids and a few more adventures. And, you know, there's times where I, I do work a lot. So to have some extra time with them. I'd say that's the biggest blessing that I've had in the last month with just this COVID craziness is I'm taking a little bit more special time with the family. Yeah, and that's awesome. Kind of reminded me like, you know, you, you know, got to make sure to be doing that. What's your advice to people? Because um, I, I get criticized sometimes because I don't have any kids and I can't. So I'm just, of course, you know, I can go do whatever I want to do. So people get all weird about like the work-life balance thing. What's your advice to people that want to start a business that want to hustle want to grind but also have a, a family especially a small bunch of kids you know like you do um what's your advice to them and how how could you manage it <clears throat> i would say giving yourself like if it's in terms of you're jumping into entrepreneurship um i think it's you know the first couple of years i think you do have to put in a lot of extra hours and a lot of extra work and, you know and chasing your dreams uh, all the the early work and grind that i put in i don't think i'd be where i'm at today without it but the more that I do it now, you know, I've been making videos for eight, nine years and you know, that's, I've made over 250 videos and that's a lot of videos and a lot of time that I've put in. And so now it's like, and also like I look at, as I get older and my health and how much I'm staring at a screen, like I have to watch that stuff. So, you know, giving myself structure. Um, but what I'm getting at is the biggest thing that I've learned. And this is literally just in the last year is that I think creatives strive on structure. And if mm. you told me that early on, I would have laughed at you. To me, early on, you know, creativity and being a creative was like, I'm up late, I'm editing videos, it's, you know, going hard, entrepreneurship, Red Bull, you know, and it's, it doesn't have to be all that. And it really, for your health, shouldn't be. And I'm still learning that and still working on that. 
but for me, it's giving myself structure. Like literally I like, this is, this is like my Bible. This is i uh, I'm going to have a Bible too, but this is my planner. And I am religious about writing out my daily goals, my weekly goals and yearly and just a daily to-do list. So like I have a really solid structure about how I work and when I come into the studio, what I do and when, and I'm kind of surprised at myself for being like that, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> but it, it's what's worked for me. And I picked that up in college when I think one of my professors was like, you know, telling the whole class, you need to get a planner. And I was like, yeah, I guess. Well, when I got that planner at UWO, literally seven years back, I have never stopped writing out my stuff and what I have to do. And I've only gotten better with it. And that's allowed to me to implement structure in my day to day as a creative. And I think I thrive off of that. Just like. I, absolutely. Like. Yeah. Well, what you're saying is, is great because when you talk about the theory, the philosophy of order and chaos, one of the things is, is the, the creativity sometimes comes from chaos, but in order to realize the creativity, you have to bring order to it. So I see this a lot of times because um, I get a lot of phone calls from people just in the coaching side of the business where, where people are like, Hey, I got this great idea. And if I had a, a nickel for every time someone had a great idea, I wouldn't have a coaching business. I wouldn't have any business. I'd freaking be done, you know? But the thing is so many people have these ideas, but they don't want to put in the order to make it happen. And it takes so much energy and organization to, to take a really creative, cool idea and make it into something. So the point you made about the planner is brilliant because having a planner allows you to strategize and put targets to your, your goal. And then every day you chip away at it. And eventually over time, you start to realize the result. And there's so many people that are really creative, have awesome ideas, really cool stuff, but it'll never happen because it's in their head and they can't ground it into an action. So planner is a good tip and being organized. And I think what you said was structure, like absolutely. hundred percent. I love what you said about the idea thing too. It's like, I can't tell you the amount of like crazy video ideas I've had or ideas I've had for clients and not that I've been able to uh, definitely not achieve all those. But, you know, all the stuff that we have for clients, we're able to get done. And you know, so much of that is planning and organization. Structure. Oh, yeah. It's easy to, to picture, too, because, I mean, it takes a ton of think about how much organization it takes to realize a really creative idea. Let's say you want to make a feature length crime drama that you want to make a Grammy Award winner or Oscar. Right. Let's say something like that. How much organization and structure and things need to happen to make that happen? Everyone's like, oh, well, then it's impossible. What they're saying is impossible is that the amount of organization and things you need to do and work on seems unrealistic. That's what they're saying. Because they're saying there's too much order to balance out that much chaos. And when you think about it, like, well, how much order can we measure this? Is this possible to do? Who do I need to talk to? Who's in my current network? How much, what kind of phone calls do I need to make? How much money do we need to make? What's got to be on my resume? You can actually put together a plan when you ask good questions like that of how I could make a freaking Oscar award winner. Yeah. It's not just a throw a freaking dice out there and hope that the luck of life gives you a lottery ticket. No, it's about what needs to happen to do this. And that's, I think, a good example to illustrate when you have crazy creativity like you have, the amount of order you need to practice in it. So mm -hmm. it's a good tip, man, especially for people that have big ideas. Guy messaged me yesterday, same thing. He's like, I got all these big ideas. I'm like, well, there's two reasons you're not acting on it. Number one is you're afraid. Number two, you have a lack of knowledge. If you have a lack of knowledge, you probably don't really have a lack of knowledge. You have a lack of, this is what I need to do tomorrow to, to start working in this direction, a lack of structure. I like that. Well, man, this has been a, an absolute treat to have you on the show. Any, any parting questions from, first of all, we'll, we'll leave it to Dan, then we'll give you the last word, sir. But we'll start with Dan. Any questions for the? For yeah, those the last. I know we're kind of going back to when you were working with Geronimo. How did, how did you guys, how did you come, how did that all come about? Like, did you reach out to him? Did they reach out to you? Like, I, I guess with the, how did that all kind of come together? Cause I think that was, you know, something that I remember watching the, just awesome. You being in Lambo like that. And the, yeah. The Vayner media you know, thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That Vayner media, like it just, how, how does that all come together? How did the connections, uh, I should say piece together. Yeah. So I, I get asked that a lot and this is really fun how we first got like introduced. So, you know, fast forward now, almost, almost two years, you know, we kind of have this, this small partnership. We've been able to create about, I don't know, seven, eight videos for Vayner Sports and their athletes. And they originally found us through Instagram. Wow. Yeah. They were, you know, looking for, they had uh, Geronimo and then Josh Jackson, you know, where they're two Green Bay Packers players. And so this was in uh, August of 2018. And they were looking for a videographer close to Green Bay. 
So they found us on Instagram and then went on to our website and, you know, liked what they saw. And then they pretty much just told us like, Hey, we have this, uh, you know, one gig for you guys. Um, Josh Jackson, he's having his first meet and greet ever, you know, he's newer to the Packers. And they were like, you know, if you guys do a good job with this video, you'll potentially have more. And so I thought it was really cool that they told us all that, like how they found us and everything um, and whatnot. But it was, this is really funny though, is I remember literally getting the call from them. Uh, like it was, I was walking back to Rise and Grind. I was working out of the co-working space, you know, a few blocks from here. And I get a call from New York. And around that time, I was getting a lot of like, a lot of spam calls. I almost didn't pick up this call. And when I picked it up, it was uh, David from Vayner Sports. And he was like, hey, this is David from Vayner Sports. Like, um, you know, I see that you follow like Gary Vaynerchuk. And I like, I thought it was like a spam call or something. I was like, wait, what? Like, and then I got back <laughs> up and my heart started racing. Like, wait, this is really someone from Vayner Sports. <laughs> you know, get your head on straight. <laughs> and a- was no, cool. go ahead. no, it was just, it was just very, you know, awesome. And I was so surprised by that, you know, initial call. It's, it's really a, a lesson too, for people like put your work out there, like put your yes. content out there, right? Like they just stumbled on you over Instagram and they look at your website. They found you because you were putting stuff out. There it was all inbound. It's not like you made 200 million cold calls or you decided to sleep at the doorstep of Gary Vaynerchuk's house until he decided to freaking put you out there. It's like, no, just do your thing. And <clears throat> the really cool thing, which I like to think is like, kind of like the back door of that, which helped that was that this is, you know, really full circle too, is that just um, about nine months prior, at the end of 2017, I was like heavy into Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, and listening to his podcast every day. I was taking his, his advice and I was taking his advice on our mirrorless Instagram account. And I had been posting like crazy for nine months. And then three months before they reached out to us, I had rebranded our stuff. Some of this, like literally input I got from him in rebranding our, our whole business, but also our website. So it was like for them to land on our Instagram and our site, and all these nice changes were on there of stuff I had in part implemented from Gary V's advice was like, that's cool. And I like to think that that, you know, helped a little bit. Yeah, I think that's awesome, man. That's a cool story, though. I mean, here you are working with NFL athletes and you have the opportunity to, you know, film them and make some of their work. It's really cool. And, and we, we love we've loved following you along on this journey. It's really been an awesome time. Uh, just want to give you the last word here, Alex, you know, uh, as, as we part ways and we'll, we'll hang out and talk a little bit after this, but, you know, as far as we'll end the live stream and, but I just wanted to give you a chance to kind of give any advice or thoughts to potential entrepreneurs or any listeners out there. Completely. I mean, I, I push people to chase their dreams and find what they're passionate about. You know, at, you don't always know what you're passionate about at a young age. And I think that's, I think now more than ever with social media and everything. And I see younger kids because I work with a lot of them, a lot of, you know, 18, 19 and 20 year olds is that, you know, they struggle with not knowing what they want to do in life. And you don't have to know that then. I definitely didn't. You know, I went through hell and back from 18 to 22 before I even found what I was passionate about. And then from 22 to literally 26, it was three, four years of working on my passion and figuring it out. You know, like it took me, I love that quote, you know overnight success took 10 years, right? That quote is so perfect. It may sound cliche until you're in it and you put in eight, nine years of work. And like, for me, like the Vayner sports stuff is some of the coolest stuff I've done, right? That didn't happen till seven, eight years in, right? Like, and there isn't this perfect, I made it moment. There's all these little moments that lead up to that, you know, and it, and it just goes like that for your whole life, you know? And I hope that I continue to redefine those, I made it moments. Because when I went through hell and back at a young age, I was redefining rock bottom. So now let's redefine me chasing my dreams and making it happen in life. You only got one life to live. Chase your dreams. Make it happen. You can do it. Hey, awesome advice, brother. Thank you so much. This was the local coffee buffet here with AJ Armstrong, Dan Spower, and our guest today, Alex Belleville with Mirrorless Productions. He's tagged in this um, Facebook post, but we'll also repurpose this on a podcast and put any links to Mirrorless Productions in our show notes. Thank you so much, everybody. Peace, somebody. Thanks.